book is called Kingdom Consciousness. It is what we should be about. It's a different perspective on the kingdom. Uh, we are about prosperity and God is about the kingdom. He says that prosperity is tied up, linked in to kingdom work. We ain't going to get no good amen. Amen. So he impressed upon my spirit to write this book and it starts out in search of purpose. Um, I talk a little bit about being birthed into the kingdom. I talk about walking in kingdom consciousness. I have a section in here that's called sleepwalking. And because the church is doing everything that it thinks God wants, it thinks God wants, but they're absolutely asleep when it comes to what God really wants. I told God he was going to get me in trouble and get me out to church. Also, I break down in this book what the name devil really means, what the name uh, angel of light really means. I take these words from the Greek and from the Hebrew to break it down so you can understand exactly what it is that the enemy is trying to do. Um, when I wrote this book, the devil really tried to attack my body, and I'll tell you about that um, in a few minutes. Um, I talk about spiritual birth and where it begins. It begins as a mental agreement with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I talk about the seed which is resident in you. When Christ is resident in you, you are already a child of God. I, I, I talk in this book about um, babies. The not I talk in this book about bringing forth a uh, man-child. I talk about what a man-child is. Two words in the Greek. Man uh, comes from the word Aaron, which means male or man, strong, lifting up child from the Greek word huis, which means a mature son. So what God is trying to do is to to find mature son. <laughs> Amen. And sons there does not have gender. So I, I, I talk about maturing in stages. I talk about bar mitzvah. And what bar mitzvah means in the Jewish as well as what bar mitzvah means in the spirit. So I, I, I talk about um, bar mitzvah in the spirit and how it equates with Jesus. Um, it, is, it is a good book. I wrote it. It, it took me a long time to write it. Uh, but um, uh, uh, it equates with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the bar mitzvah. Um, so the enemy really, really tried to get me not to uh, uh, to write this book and and to to put it out there, but it's out there now. It's out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say in this book that the noise of the world has detached the church from her fundamental biblic uh, bib uh, biblical and theological mission. There are too many voices call into different directions resulting in deafness to the single most important sound, the voice of God. And um, it, is a, it is a good book. I have a few copies that are outside, amen, and, and um, I, I just want you, uh, the, the, the cost of the book um, is $20, and that's only because I have to go back and re- um, uh, do the book and just get it out there. We're not making anything on this book. God just told me to write it. I talk about kingdom influence. I talk about secrets in this book. Uh, I say that secrets are a cloaking, a personal concealing, and a willful denial of truth. And I talk about unmanaged secrets what they lead to, what the church is doing, how the church is going, how we are, are can't get to God because of unmanaged secrets. 
And somebody need to do a, a message on unmanaged secrets. Unmanaged secrets. Uh, uh, that's what's leading to human deception because we've got so many secrets. That's why when God saves us, he goes into the secrets of our hearts. And he pulls out the stuff that was a secret. Oh, let me stop talking about the book. It'll be outside and I'll be out there to uh, sign it. This is the things that God has given me to do. I'm getting ready to do uh, a, a workshop book with this and also book number two. Uh, we'll be coming out hopefully, amen, by the end of this year. I'll have it all together. I talk about the urban community in here and how it faces challenges when it comes to uh, the kingdom of God. I talk about that. I talk about Costas. If any of you are familiar with Costas, Orlando Costas, I talk about him and the stuff that he has said. Um, um, about evangelizing your communities, your urban community, it is a good book. If I must say so myself. For just about 15 minutes, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something in Judges chapter number 4. And uh, bear in mind the things that I just said to you when I first had you standing because I'm going to connect all of this tonight. Uh, Judges chapter number 4, and I'm just going to read just uh, 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 two verses in Judges chapter 4. And I want to read verse uh, number, oh, let's go down and read verse number 8 and verse number 9. Verse number 8 and verse number 9. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. I just want you to uh, put your Bibles down and I, I want to use, um, we have them, we call them thoughts and then we call them sub thoughts. Um, so just for the sake of putting this message out there, grab your neighbor and just look at them and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's your time, it's your time. to arrive. Um, now, just so that they will understand a little bit more what I'm going to go to and what I'm, I'm going to say, I want you to look at them, and I want to lose you something that we've been talking about for years. I want you to look at them and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. The, fight the fight is fixed. It's all on the fight. Um, <laughs> You can be seated. You know, I, I've come to Charlotte tonight with a word for somebody that's sitting in this house tonight. And I've just come to give you what God gives me. I, I've come to say to you tonight that not only is it time for you to arise but I want you to understand you're arising because it's already fixed. There is nothing else that you need to do except get up and do it. You are guaranteed to win and you cannot lose. No matter how powerful or strong your opponent is, no matter what tricks the enemy tries to pull, no matter what advantages that uh, I I there seem to be over you, you are the declared winner. I, I need you to tell your neighbor that you are the declared winner. And you haven't even thrown the first punch. 
you're a winner. Y'all didn't get that. You are a declared winner, and you haven't even thrown the first punch. And I know it may not make sense, but I deal now from a God perspective. Every time I've been through what I've been through, I see things very differently than I saw before. And see, I, I, I view it from a God perspective. And from a God perspective, this is what he's saying. Victory is not determined by the outcome, but is established by the income. Oh, uh, somebody going to get that next week. Uh, victory, I'm going to say it again so you'll understand. Victory is not determined by the outcome. It is established by the income. In other words, it is established by faith. Mm -hmm. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm going to prove my point. I'm going to prove text my text in just a moment. See, in other words, we've won the fight before we ever stepped into the ring. See, I don't, I don't know what the devil is trying to do in your life. I know what he's trying to do in my life. I don't, I don't know what he's trying to do, but I don't know what mountain is standing in your way. But I came to tell you, no matter who you are or what you're facing, the answer is the same. Faith equals a firm belief in the integrity, ability, effectiveness, and the genuineness of a belief and a trust in God. Y'all better hear me. Faith is just not something, oh, faith is not just something that just happened. Faith is, is dealing with your integrity of how you believe God does, the ability that God can do something, the effectiveness of what God does, and the genuineness and belief of trust in God. And you have to be loyal to God. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance. Y'all not saying that. Of things hoped for. Now faith. Uh, now faith is dealing with my ability and my genuineness and my loyalty to God. Uh, see, God determines victory by what's going on, uh, uh, by not what's going on around them, but by what God determines victory by the absence of eternal conflict. I can't get y'all to hear me. Uh, God determines victory by what's going on inside of us. Not what's going on outside of us. He, he knows what's going on outside of us. But God determines victory by the way you handle it on the inside. Uh, look at somebody and tell them, handle your business. Handle it. Handle it. See, in other words, God is looking at how you are praising him, how you are handling what it is that has been dumped in your lap and dumped on your head. God's looking at what's going on on the inside. He's looking to find if there's any turmoil. Y'all not saying nothing. Uh, or is there consistency in your praise? Is, is there a lack of integrity? Why don't y'all talk back to me? Are you genuine in your belief? That's what, that's what God is looking at. Come on, somebody. Huh? God is looking for victory that overcometh the world, uh, even our faith. Uh, I wish I had a church in here that would say amen. Uh, looks like this side is happy. This side ain't saying nothing. Uh, I need everybody to say, look at somebody and say, faith is a victory thing. See, victory, tell your neighbor this, victory is an attitude. And tell somebody, get an attitude. You see, when we come in church and the devil has knocked us upside the head and we still come in here with an attitude, hey girl, how you doing? Hey, 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 how's everybody doing? Are you saying to me that victory is an attitude? So tell somebody it's an attitude. Uh, tell them it's an attitude of faith. And since faith has become my posture, then I have an attitude. My attitude says that no matter what the enemy tries to do, it's okay. I have a posture. I have a stand in faith. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
What is an attitude? An attitude is a position assumed for a, spe- for a specific purpose. It's a mental position with regard to a fact or to a state. So you can take to the enemy the fact of the matter is God is still God. <laughs> Y'all not say. I'm talking about the fact. Come on, somebody. And the fact of the matter is, yes, I may be going through, but God is still God. Uh, The fact of the matter is that the devil may be sitting on my family, but God is still God. I wish I could get somebody to help me in here. I may have a bad doctor's report. That's a fact. Look at somebody holler, that's a fact. But God is still God. And I have a mental position and a mental state. And I've got a specific purpose in mind. that I've got the victory in this matter, no matter what this matter looks like. Ah, Hallelujah. And see, when we get into God's word and get God's word in our hearts, it produces the attitude. It produces the attitude. Tell your neighbor victory is a discipline. Uh, In other words, I'm disciplined in my belief, in my faith in God. I cannot be swayed. Come on, I cannot be tempted. I cannot. Y'all better hear me. I cannot be moved. Come on. I cannot be. I can't, I'm not leaving the church. I, I can't backslide. Victory is a discipline. Uh, I can't commit fornication. Now, it's not that I can't. I just won't. Y'all not, because victory has become a discipline. Why don't y'all talk back to me? Talk back to me. Why y'all quiet over here? I say it again. I cannot commit fornication. It's not that I can't do it. I just have a victory discipline. I'm disciplined in some area. Oh, why don't y'all talk back? got feelings and emotions too. Y'all not saying nothing. I just know how to discipline myself. Ah, it's quiet. Why so quiet? Why so quiet? Victory is a discipline. It's a discipline. It's what I want to do. Not what it has to do. See, God is looking for folk that do what they do because they want to do it. And not because you have to do it. Oh, I'm going to say that again. God is looking for somebody that wants to do. And not because they have to. Oh, y'all not saying Ah, victory is the spirit that hears criticism but keeps on pressing. And victory is not a life without problems, but it's a life that faces problems with a promise. Y'all not saying nothing. Ah, I got some problems, but I got a promise. So when I weigh my problems against my promise, y'all not say, my promise outweighs my problem. What God promised me outweighs anything the enemy has set up for me. Oh, I wish I could get somebody to holler glory up in here. Ah, because my promise carries weight. Y'all not saying nothing. It carries weight with God and it carries weight with me because now I have become disciplined. I'm almost through. See, faith, victory 
is the faith that cleaves to it, clings to a promise until the problem is defeated. God is saying cling to your promise. You are escalating your problems, but cling to your promise. Oh, y'all not saying nothing. He's saying victory will cleave to your hand until it's welded to the word. Oh, y'all not saying nothing. Uh, you see, there are some fights in swords that when they put them on, they have to strap them around their hand in order to keep it on because they're in a fight. Y'all not saying nothing. Uh, God is saying cleave to a promise. Y'all not saying nothing until it's welded to the word. In the Old Testament, for those of you who understand, soldiers would weld their hands to their swords so that they could keep on fighting in the battle. If we're going to fight, we're going to have to be welded to the word. Not welded to a person, but welded to a word. Not welded to a Jebusite. Welded to a word. Not welded to small fingers. Welded to a word. Not welded to people that have no vision. Welded to the word. Because faith has already fixed this fight. Oh, it's quiet now. We are in... Pastor Murphy, the finest hour of the church. We are in the finest hour of the church. When God is putting together a team, if you will, mm -hmm, that's going to be a part of this great move or movement that God's about to exact in the earth. We have people who've answered the call. Hold that fight in your head because I'm coming back. There are many people who've answered the call and embraced destiny ordained for them. But there is a text that is blowing my mind because it says in Joel 2.28, in the last day, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and they shall dream dreams. However, when I look back in the church that is supposed to be about movement, I am seeing that, that there are still some members in the body of Christ who have not released or embraced what God is saying in his word about giftings and callings and destiny. But it's time now. Look at somebody and say, it's time now. Tell them, in fact, it is my time now to arise and not be scared. It's time for me to prophesy. Prophesy means to declare and to announce or speak forth to the heavens that Jesus rules in the land. And, and that whatever situations and circumstances you face, he's already fixed it. He has decreed the destiny beforehand. He has designated and assigned and dedicated in advance. In advance of when before we got on this earth, it was already decided our destiny. He predetermined beforehand to impose or to direct beforehand exactly what it is that we would be doing. Now we speak of prophetic destiny. And that is that which has been declared over your life by God for his purposes which defies geographical location race, creed, national origin, 
ethnicity, territory, or any other obstacle. Mm, Y'all didn't get that. You'll get it next week. It is. When we think about a a, a fighting, we, we say that kind of thing. That's just a cliche that we always use in the church. When we think about fighting, one of the things that the Lord said to me was the enemy has fought most of us in our early childhood. Y'all know how you ain't going to get Amen. See, the enemy tried to influence your earlier life so that now where you are now, you cannot cope because your life was affected early. Sometimes it's when you are a little child. Yet sometimes it's when you are a teenager. Can I talk about five or ten more minutes? Your life has been affected early. You were fought from the time your mama brought you in the world up until where you are right now. It is has been a fight. Some of you are almost lost, and you couldn't get here but God. Look at somebody and holler, but God allowed you to be here, and it's been a fight for you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because the enemy knew you were favored and not forgotten. Tell somebody I'm favored and not forgotten. Tell somebody else that I'm favored and not forgotten. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. Amen. Amen. What God has done for us is amazing. It's amazing. That's why Joseph had so much trouble in his early life. His family was messed up. I ain't getting no good amen. Somebody need to preach this. In his early life, he was dealing with half-brothers. Oh, God, you got to help me, Pastor. Preachers, he was dealing with something in his early life that he had to learn how to cope, and he did not know how. Oh, y'all, now, it's quiet up in here. But what God had already done and what God has done for every one of us that have come into this world, there is a degree of anointing that is already resident in us. Come on. When we got saved, the only thing we did was wake up Jesus that was already in us. When we got saved, that anointing that was resident in us, y'all better help me, was awakened. That was what the devil was trying to kill in the first place. That which was resident in you. And because you had no knowledge, he came after you in your early life. He tried to kill you as a child. Oh my God. He tried to destroy you as a child. He focused in on your messed up parents. Your messed up life. Nobody liked you. Nobody cared about you. All of the things of the world began to bombard you. Because he knew what was resident in you. If you got saved, something was going to be awakened in your spirit. You were going to go after God with everything that was in you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now God has brought us to this place where we are favored but not forgotten, and then sometimes we're favored and forgotten. 
It's an oxymoron. 